Recently, while driving on the highway, a car passed. The bumper sticker was a little different, saying, Save the humans. <laughs> one sees many bumper stickers these days. This one turned my thoughts to something fundamental, the word save. I thought of the plan of salvation. I thought of the world of scholarship and Professor Arnold Toynbee's analysis of the many so-called saviors found in history. We know that one savior truly saves, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is his church. We have taken upon ourselves his name. What does the average person mean when they testify that Jesus is the Christ. Of course, it is witness of the Spirit that counts. But what do the words mean? A brief excursion into the meaning of these two words may be useful, especially to young people in these times. The Oxford Universal Dictionary on Historical Principles tells us that the word Jesus came into the English language from Middle English, adapted from the Latin, which in turn was adapted from the Greek, Iosus. This in turn was adapted from the Hebrew or Aramaic word, Yeshua or Yehoshua. The earlier root was Joshua. The dictionary goes on to explain that the word Joshua, derived from the Yah of Yahweh, meaning Jehovah is salvation. Thus the word Jesus has parallel meaning with Savior. Dr. David Flusser of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem puts it simply, Jesus is the common Greek form of the Hebrew name Joshua. The Webster's New 20th Unabridged Dictionary sets forth a comparable definition, noting that the Latin Greek derivation from the Hebrew Joshua means literally help of Jehovah. But in addition, this source states the word derives from the Hebrew word for Lord God. He who is available to help, to save. In this sense, then, the word Jesus means simply, God is help. How save the humans? As the bumper sticker read, the dictionaries and the gospel give the answer. What are the word Christ? It also comes into the English-speaking world from Middle English, derived from the Latin Christus, in turn from the Greek Christus, which meant the anointed, a noun made from the past participle of the Greek verb to anoint. Webster states that the word Christ was originally Jesus' title. Thus, proper usage of the two words in English would be as Elder James E. Talmadge titled his book, Jesus the Christ. Usage and revelation have joined the two as part of a sacred, revered name. Elder Talmadge defined the two words as follows, quote, Jesus is the individual name of the Savior and is thus spelled as of Greek derivation. In the original, the name was well understood as meaning help of Jehovah or Savior. Elder Talmadge also emphasized that the word Christ is a sacred title, not an ordinary common name. It is of Greek derivation, he wrote. It is identical to its Hebrew equivalent, Messiah signifying the anointed one. 
What was the earliest documented mention of the sacred name Jesus Christ now available to us? Dr. Joseph Armitage Robinson, one time Norrison professor of Cambridge University, held that it is probably found in the opening verse of 1 Thessalonians. Imagine the impact of these words then as we read them today in English as received by the Thessalonians, possibly two decades after the crucifixion. Quoting, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus, unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Note that the phrase God the Father is separated by the conjunction and from the phrase the Lord Jesus Christ. This demonstrates first century belief in the separate individuality of the Father and the Son as restored by the prophet Joseph Smith. The opening verse of the Gospel according to St. Mark also comes with great force as a historical document fraught with meaning. Quote, The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Unquote. The Gospel of John the Beloved is even more eloquent. He records the witness of the Savior's forerunner, John the Baptist, as follows, quote, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Save the humans. Think of the Baptist's testimony. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. How did the Savior of mankind acquire his name in mortality? By revelation. To Joseph of Nazareth, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Here is confirmation of the dictionary meaning of the name as recorded by Matthews. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Mary also had angelic confirmation of the name as recorded by Luke. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found faith with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. The formal naming of the child when eight days old is recorded by Luke. Quote, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The name which means God is help, the anointed one, the promised Messiah, has thus come to us. Some three decades ago, Professor Arnold Toynbee concluded one of the most extensive studies of history ever undertaken. He recorded mankind's quest for our saviors, for the way out. He identified four categories. One, the creative genius. Two, the savior with the sword. Three, the savior with a time machine. Those dreaming of a utopia or an archaic past which never existed. And fourth, the Savior as a philosopher, masked as a king. All these history rejects. 
Finally, Toynbee pointed to the God incarnate in a man, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he wrote, quote, This is in truth the final result of our survey of saviors. When we set out on this quest, we found ourselves moving in the midst of a mighty host. But as we have pressed forward, the marchers, company by company, have fallen out of the race. The first to fail were the swordsmen, the next the archaists and the futurists, the next the philosophers, until only gods were left in the running. And now, as we stand and gaze with our eyes affixed upon the farther shore, a single figure rises from the flood and straightway fills the whole horizon. There is the Savior." Unquote. We know that Savior to be the Lord Jesus Christ. From many, many experiences over my lifetime, I can truly testify to you that he is truly help, that he truly is our Savior. And if the Father is approached in prayer as his Son has commanded us, doors will open to help us move forward without fear in life. That all men everywhere may come to realize and know the significance of Jesus the Christ the one chosen before the foundation of the world is my faith and witness in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.